Friday. Today is April 30th, and I hope everybody's having a good week. Last episode, we went over the Roth Customs Reaper and a little bit of history and started fabrication, which we're going to show you here in just a moment. Really not too much setup, so let's go ahead and hit the shop and see what's happening with Peak Cycles. And we are about ready to fabricate a Reaper. Spent most of the morning setting up the frame jig, and yes, it's quite time consuming when you don't have numbers, pretty much just mocking this original Reaper and adjusting the fixtures accordingly. This is actually number seven of the original 20. Belongs to myself, currently going through a facelift and wide stripped down. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and start cutting, bending, rolling, and keep it going. And here we have a few necessities on the table. Head tube, bottom bracket, standard two and three quarter inch. This particular reaper is going to be accepting three inch wide wheels. Dropouts, I went with the original design of the first generation reapers. The gusset is slightly different. I had them redesigned to go all the way around the bottom bracket, whereas the early ones pretty much stopped here and here. Got three different sticks up here. The reason for that is one is a five footer, which is usually cut in half for fork tubes. I've also got an 80 inch that I use when I roll my frames. And then I got a full 10 footer here and I'm gonna try and figure out what exactly we need here to utilize the material and not waste. So let's go ahead and start measuring. Measure twice, cut once, right? Here we have the main pieces cut, rolled, and I was able to utilize the 10 footer and the five footer up here, rolled to a certain radius. And then these two pieces were rolled as a single piece and cut it in half. This piece down here is a three footer piece of scrap I already had in the shop, so I got lucky there. And now we're gonna go ahead and start rolling the one inch cantilevers. And that is one long roll down. Basically a 10 foot stick. Very pleased of how flat it turned out. And the reason for it is with most frame designs, the cantilevers usually have a break in the design here and change up the seat stays. In this case, this frame design has one long piece going from front to rear. So we needed to roll it as a single piece. You cut it in half and then that way, you know you have matching radiuses. Did a whole episode on this. Let's go ahead and move on to the chain stays. about ready to get into the dirty work. Everything cut, bent, rolled. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, got the frame jig all leveled up. Cleaned up the bottom from all the slag down here, much overdue. Dropouts in place. 
bottom bracket in. Got the side mount on here because the down tube is gonna fall in between like this. Head tube. And let's go ahead and start coping. Gonna jump in here, you're probably asking what's up with that drop down hood. And if you know me, I'm a safety guy. I've been wearing eye protection, ear protection, gloves, boots, whole bit. I don't have OSHA standing over me, however, I'm not getting any younger. And with that said, I personally have taken metal to the eye, not once, but twice. First time I was able to wash it out myself. Second time I had to go to the eye doctor and have it removed. Both times I was wearing safety glasses. So after the second time, I said to myself, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna start wearing a full shield can purchase them at Home Depot, Harbor Freight, and it worked fine. However, this popped up on my social media page, which is a grinding hood made by Benchmark Abrasive. If you're not familiar with them, they do all types of abrasives, fabrication, accessories. And when I saw this, I thought to myself, well, that looks practical. And sure enough, when I got it, it is designed for a respirator, so you can wear a respirator and keep it on. You don't have to flip your hood up and down, you don't have to take it off. It's also designed for over-the-ear protection, which is nice. And what I really like about it is when I have it on is I can do my cuts and grinding or whatever with it down. And then when I'm working, I flip it back up and do what I'm doing, move things around, go to cut again, flip it down. Very convenient. A couple things I had to get used to, which isn't anything bad, it's just... When I first got it, the, the vision area is really nice and big and the lens is so clear that it's hard to not flinch when things are flying at your face. Uh, the other thing is that it feels so much like my welding hood that there would be a couple times where I'd have something in place, get ready to tack it, do the nod to drop my hood and I have the wrong hood on. <laughs> other than that, very practical. They sell replacement lenses of which I have one. I haven't had to use it yet. I use a microfiber cloth and wipe it down inside and out, and so far it's holding up very well. Benchmark abrasives, check them out. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and hit the shop and keep going. So here's a little trick on getting a sharper coping. This is as sharp of an angle my notcher will coat, and I need it to be at least this far. So what we're gonna do is this isn't really a trick, this is actually the old school way of coping, is we're gonna follow this lead here and then keep cutting to here and it's gonna give us a deeper coat. So here's that coat, cleaned it up with the grinder, had to open it up a little bit, but I already mocked it up and checked the angles, we're good to go with that. Before we move on, this is the top tube at the end, gonna cap it off, grind it smooth because I like to cap before tacking things together, it surely makes things easier. Well, that's it for today. Mainframe completed. Coopings, nice and tight. Got a cap there, miters, looking good. On to the cantilevers and rear stays tomorrow. That there is part one of two. I initially had it planned to show you the entire fabrication in this episode. However, we're reaching or approaching the 10 minute mark of which I try to keep the videos anywhere between 10 and 12 minutes. So we will continue with part two. The frame is initially done right now, but we will continue with part two next week. That's pretty much gonna wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed today's version of what's happening at Peak Cycles. And until next time, make it a killer day.
pretty much part one of two. I initially had a plan to show you the entire fabrication in this episode. However, we're approaching the 10 minute mark, of which I try to keep the videos in between 10 and 12 minutes. That's a jet, you hear? Private jet. 